Well, it is the end of another day. I'm out here in the garage enjoying a cigar. And I had a thought earlier today uh, about how infrequently we hear uh, men celebrating other men. Uh, you hear it on, uh, obviously, ESPN. You may hear somebody touting about how great an athlete is. We hear about celebrities and how great they are, about all the things they do. And sometimes it may be the work that they do, whether it be, uh, you know, professional actors or musicians, uh, somebody in that type of industry that's far, far away but we rarely see it on an individual basis. Uh, and one of the ways that I've seen this play out, I'm sure you've seen it too, is when people are trying to make suggestions. Uh, I used to wonder why they would get so passionate. For instance, if somebody's looking for a new cell phone uh, carrier, who are they gonna go with? Well, if you bring up that question in a workplace, you will hear everybody start touting about how great their cell phone company is, or how terrible it was, and they're making a recommendation for somebody else uh, about who they just moved to, right? Or sometimes you'll see it with a bank. Who do you bank with? Oh man, I love this bank. They're incredible, they're so great. And I used to wonder why do people get so passionate about it? Specifically, I would see it when I would have been either an employee of the company that they're talking about, or I'd had a different experience that was negative, and I would try and offer a counterpoint to their promotion that they were doing for their company and they would shut me down hard. I don't know if you've had that happen, but people can get pretty passionate about what services they have chosen um, to sign up for. And I, like I said, I wondered why are people so passionate about it? And really what I've you know, come to understand is that ultimately everyone is looking for that validation that they can do the right thing, that they can make the right decisions. And, you know, if we don't have somebody, you know, a father or a mother or some, somebody who is a mentor to us, who is affirming the decisions that we make, we look to our peers. And, you know, we question our ability to make that right decision. And if we can convince somebody else to make the same decision we did, then in a way that is affirming our ability to make a good decision. And so I say that to say, look around you throughout the day, throughout the week, and see if there is anybody who you notice them doing something well. You notice that they uh, are really good at something specific. Give them that compliment. I know that's a weird uh, thing, especially if it's in a workplace and it's not the way things normally go, but watch what happens when you give somebody a very authentic, very specific uh, celebration, especially if it's, you know, it's nice if it's done in public, but if you do it privately, just on a one-on-one -on -one basis, say, hey, I, you know, I noticed that you had to really work hard to finish your work today, and I didn't know if you were going to be able to do it. I was tied up with mine, so I couldn't help, but I really was impressed with how you were able to turn it around. Watch what it does to them. They will start raising their head up, pulling their shoulders back, and walking with a new confidence because somebody has seen them, somebody has celebrated them. So many times in our day-to-day -day life, everything is beating us down. We've got so many uh, negative things that just weigh heavy on us. And it's so important to have those moments where you can feel celebrated. You can have something positive to look forward to. Um, in scripture, you would see uh, when something significant would happen, uh, they would have put up a pillar or uh, some kind of indicator that they can look back to as a reminder of, hey, you know what? This was rough at this point, but man, God showed up. Look at what he did. And it's so important for us to be able to have those things as well. So look for that in other people that you can celebrate. And then in your own life, look at the things and be willing to do something to commemorate them. Write it down, uh, take a picture of it, and actually print the picture. I know we take pictures all the time on our phones and everything, but do something that you can look back to and remember something significant happened uh, in your life and see just what it does for you. So that was my thought for today. Uh, and... Hopefully it was encouraging to you. Hopefully it was challenging to you. Um, 
But so here we go into Romans, continuing our Romans. Uh, we're on chapter 15 tonight. We then who are strong ought to bear with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good, leading to edification. For even Christ did not please himself, but as it is written, the, the reproaches of those who reproached you fell on me. For whatever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through the patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Now may the God of patience and comfort grant you to be like-minded toward one another according to Christ Jesus, that you may with one mind and one mouth glorify the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore receive one another just as Christ also received us to the glory of God. Now I say that Jesus Christ has become a servant to the circumcision for the truth of God to confirm the promises made to the fathers and that the Gentiles might glorify God for his mercy, as it is written. For this reason, I will confess to you among the Gentiles and sing to your name. And again, he says, Rejoice, O Gentiles, with his people. And again, Praise the Lord, all you Gentiles. Laud him, all you peoples. And again, Isaiah says, There shall be a root of Jesse, and he who shall rise to reign over the Gentiles, in him the Gentiles shall hope. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now I myself am confident concerning you, my brethren, that you also are full of goodness, filled with all knowledge, and, all, and able also to admonish one another. Nevertheless, brethren, I have written more boldly to you on some points as reminding you because of the grace given to me by God that I might be a minister of Jesus Christ to the Gentiles, ministering the gospel of God, that the offering of the Gentiles might be acceptable, sanctified by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I have reason to glory in Christ Jesus and the things which pertain to God. For I will not dare to speak of any of those things which Christ has not accomplished through me in word and deed to make the Gentiles obedient in mighty signs and wonders by the power of the Spirit of God, so that from Jerusalem and round about to Ili excuse me, I'm going to butcher this one, Ilicrium, Il Illyricum, yeah, I'm sorry, I totally am failing on that one. I have fully preached the gospel of Christ, and so I have made it my aim to preach the gospel, not where Christ was named, lest I should build on another man's foundation. But as it is written, to whom he was not announced, they shall see, and those who have not heard shall understand. For this reason, I have been much hindered from coming to you, but now no longer having a place in these parts and having a great desire uh, these many years to come to you. Whenever I journey to Spain, I shall come to you, for I hope to see you on my journey and to be helped on my way there by you, if first I may enjoy your company for a while." But now I am going to Jerusalem to minister to the saints. For it pleased those from Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor among the saints who are in Jerusalem. It pleased them indeed, and they are their debtors. For if the Gentiles have been partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister to them in material things. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed them with this, sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by way of you to Spain. But I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Now I beg you, brethren, through the Lord Jesus Christ and through the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in prayers to God for me that I may be delivered from those in Judea who do not believe, and that my service for Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints, that I may come to you with joy by the will of God and may be refreshed together with you. Now the God of peace be with you all. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining me tonight. Uh, if you are not already subscribed to the channel, please do me a favor. I would love to have you subscribe. Make sure you hit that notification button so you get the updates when I send out the videos. Uh, also, if you like this, please give me a thumbs up and share it on social media. And if anything stood out to you or you'd like to talk about anything or have questions, please add those in the comment for me and for anybody else who would like to uh, contribute as well. And also, as always, if you are in the Lebanon area, 
and would like to join me, I would love to have you out with me to share a cigar and change the world.